Does the government work for us or do we work for the government? Today, Texas Governor Rick Perry endorsed a plan to give you choices when it comes to paying your taxes. Tonight, flat tax, fair tax, more tax, no tax. Which will it be? Americans have finally awakened to what Congressman Ron Paul has been saying for many years. We created the income tax and all its complexities and all the authoritarian bureaucracy that collects it so we can repeal it. For the first time in many years, the leading candidates for a major party's presidential nomination are committed to simplifying the federal tax code. Herman Cain wants a form of a flat income tax at 9%, coupled with a national sales tax at the same rate. Some folks, like my friend the radio host Neil Bortz, refer to this national sales tax as the fair tax. Governor Perry has proposed a flat income tax at a straight 20 percent, with the option of choosing that rate or following the loophole-ridden, social engineering-driven, nearly impossible to understand current tax code. Governor Romney, who supported TARP, that was President George W. Bush's bailout of banks and insurance companies, as well as the idea of government stimulus programs, wants to keep the current tax code but lower tax rates on the middle class and keep them where they are for the rich. And he wants to keep borrowing. But in fairness to the former Massachusetts governor, he's still formulating whatever his tax plan will be. So don't get your hopes up while waiting. Mitt Romney raised taxes when he was the governor of Massachusetts. Oh, and Congressman Ron Paul, he wants to abolish the IRS altogether and have the government charge fees for its services. All this tells us that the time has come to re-examine the relationship of the federal government to each individual in America. I'd start by asking, by what authority the government taxes us in the first place? The government receives its power from the consent of the governed. Did you give it the power to tax you? Remember that we seceded from Great Britain, Britain in large measure because of taxes. And from the time the United States was created as a separate country in 1776 to the Woodrow Wilson and Theodore Roosevelt inspired progressive era, there were no general federal taxes. Oh, the feds did tax people for using the ports and Lincoln did impose an unlawful income tax during the war between the states and the feds did charge the states and individuals for services rendered. But before those nanny staters in the progressive movement came along, the federal government did not take the property or the wealth of individuals. This was because, with the exception of Lincoln, until Roosevelt and Wilson, in the area of taxes and property, the feds followed the Constitution. And the Constitution, which was written to define and to restrain the federal government, prohibits it from taking life or liberty or property without a jury trial. That's in the Fifth Amendment. That's the clause that President Obama violated when he killed an American in Yemen earlier this month. That's the clause that Lincoln violated when he killed hundreds of thousands of Americans and when he imposed an illegal income tax. And that's the same clause that restrained the federal government's lust for wealth until the 16th Amendment, which permits the federal income tax, was enacted. The 16th Amendment was one of the greatest frauds in American history. It was enacted with President Wilson's promises that only those earning greater than $10,000 a year, that would be about $150,000 by present standards, would ever pay income taxes to the feds. He also promised that the rate of taxation would never exceed 3%. Today, the top rate is 35%. And the taxes apply to everyone, though, as you know, many have managed to avoid it. Do you want a federal sales tax? Well, who would want to give the feds any more opportunity to take any more of your money? Do you want a flat tax? Well, I commend Governor Perry, because simpler is better and more choice is better. Do you want more of the same? Then Mitt Romney is your guy. Do you want to keep 100% of what you earn? Then you want a game changer. And only Congressman Ron Paul will push for that. We all know that money is the mother's milk of politics. And if we let the federal government take our wealth, if we let it decide how much of it to take, do we ever really own anything? The government's lust for your wealth is insatiable. The Beatles knew that when they wrote The Tax Man. If you drive your car, I'll tax the street. If you drive to city, I'll tax your seat. If you get too cold, I'll tax the heat. If you take a walk, I'll tax your feet. Don't let that curious prediction come to pass. You want to read about all of this? Be sure to check out my new book. It's dangerous to be right when the government is wrong. You'll see my take on the case for personal freedom and against taxes. From New York, defending freedom every night of the week. So long, America.